Hello and well met. This is Layman with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. Today we're going to talk about Fantasy Grounds shops, extensions, stores, and use cases. So a lot of times when you're running a campaign, it could be a real pain in the rear to have to manage inventory and to deal with stores. So there are a couple suggestions that I have just based on experience and seeing what other people do in the community. So there's a few ways you can approach it. So technically when you load one of your core rule books, especially the ones that are GM facing or player facing you'll have a variety of items and then there's individual items that come with adventures and so on and so forth so what the ideal thing to do would be to actually create your own store in fantasy grounds you can also go out and buy extensions that will help you with that to make the transactions a lot smoother so we're going to kind of go over some of those options and then we're going to provide some tips and then I'm going to show you kind of a basic idea of how you could build your own store and then we'll call it a day. So first uh, comes first, let's talk about how Fantasy Grounds is when you get it kind of out of the box. So I'm going to go to my inventory tab on the party sheet or on the uh, character. So this is Squire Valius. He's a character. This is a D&D 5e rule set. But this could be very similar to some of the other rule sets, depending on how they're built. Some of them work a little differently than others, but all in all, it's kind of the same thing. So there, he has all these different um, inventory here. And traditionally, what you would do for Fantasy Grounds is open up the items and then drag that to the character sheet. So I'm going to grab some arrows just for the sake of it. So as the GM... You could t type in the search field, go to arrow, and then you could drag this SRD thing here for arrows, drag and drop it onto the character sheet, and that adds a bundle of arrows. But it doesn't change anything necessarily on the actions tab. You have to actually go in here and do that yourself. But nonetheless, he's you know that's something that you might have to do depending on what, what rule set you have and how things interact. But generally speaking, um, arrows are ammunition, and you would have to come in here and add those to, to your inventory. In this case, there's already 20 for the short bow, so I don't have to change anything there. But you do have to usually put in the quantity. So technically speaking, inventory items are not directly linked to what's on your combat tracker. There is an extension that will link those, but this whole thing on the back here in inventory is pretty much all manual. It only keeps track of the weight, the description, whether or not you have it equipped or carried, and then also in some rule sets you have attunement or you know where you're actually um, uh, babies, able to use it and identify. So these are just some things that you might come across when you're playing in Fantasy Ground. So for instance, now these arrows, if they're kind of loose right now, so what I might do is change it to um, the quiver. So in this location here, I'm going to type in quiver, and that'll add it to the quiver here. But that doesn't change anything else other than just nesting it into this area. So I'm going to bring up the party sheet. This is where the GM would manage things. And if you share the party sheet with your group, they will be able to access this. So if I come over here on the far right of the top right here in Fantasy Grounds and open up the party sheet, I'm going to add the character to the party sheet. That way I can see his inventory and have him interact. So if I come over here to the inventory side of things, this is where you could reward loot. This is where you can buy, sell, and trade stuff. This will show you what's carried, and this will give you a, a way to distribute coins and items. So if you have a parcel, which is basically a group of treasure, you can reward that to your party through the party sheet. So this does a pretty good job with managing uh, treasure and stuff. So if you wanted to reward your group and not directly drag it onto their sheets, you could set up a parcel, which is basically a collection of items and coins. So if we go in here and grab some something and we can actually make uh, basically like a way that these guys can um, have items to take to put in their inventory so if you're going to do let's do some caltrops here and let's say a bag of bearings and then let's give them i don't know maybe uh, 20 gold and maybe a few copper 11 silver 
one, you know, just just those sorts of things. And then over here on the right is the individual items that'll come in from your treasure parcels if you have any. So this kind of just depends on how you create the store and how the things are listed. Because generally speaking, everything is an item that it, when it starts, in order to get those to become like a store's item, you need to make a parcel out of it. It's a lot of work. So you would take, build all your items first. Once you were done, then you would change them over to a parcel. So if you were gonna make like this crystal, for example, if you're gonna turn that into an item, you'd have to build that item first in the items group. And then you would have to, to build the parcel or drag it into the parcel to make it an item that you can interact with. So that's a, a kind of a, a long workaround, but that's one way to do it. So you can build an entire shop and then you would uh, essentially make it available to players so they can interact with it. So you could take an image for, let's just say, uh, let's just say this was your, your inventory and you would share this image with your players and then it would have the stores items linked to it. And then you can right click on these and make those shareable so they're now green. So when you share this with your players, when they click on this item, this is the parcel. And what they'll do is they'll drag that parcel to their character sheet. So if I, this is his inventory. So let's say he's in a store and I the DM makes this available to them. You can take this, this parcel, the whole thing, not just the item, but the whole parcel. It has this negative value of gold in here. So it'll subtract nine, minus 10 from their treasure if they have it. So it, it'll go negative if they don't. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop this in here. So it added the abacus, but it also deducted five or 10 gold. So now he only has five. So you can keep track of kind of a, the cost of things doing that. But if I do that again, it'll go negative. So if I drag another one here, now it's negative five because that cost 10. He already had five. There's negative five. So the way I handle that generally is just say that you owe that store a favor and until you clear that, you can't use the store. That's how I do it. So if you have stuff to sell or you need to buy stuff and you haven't cleared your debt, if it gets to a certain limit, um, they're, they're not going to deal with you. So it just kind of makes it inconvenient uh, for the player. So you can go negative. There's no way to stop that. But if it goes too far into debt, you're, you'll no longer be able to transact with that store. So that's kind of the way I, how I handle that. There are other ways to do this, but essentially that's the one, probably the easiest way to do it is to make your own items first, build those, and then build the parcels for them, and then link the parcels to your stores menu. And then you would right click and go to sharing and then share this record with your party. So it becomes like an interactive store. And then you can, party members can bookmark it and they can go back to it when you guys have a market day. So let's talk about market day. So market day is generally a day where maybe you bring your table up and you share it and maybe you'll leave it up for an hour or two while you're having dinner or whatever. You don't necessarily have to be present, but you let your players know what time frame your table's gonna be awake or available. Players can log in and do all their transactions based off of engagement with the store and the party sheet. But you do have to enable this option in the options area. So if you go to options and fantasy grounds and you go to party, show characters to players, party show players or show inventory to players. So if you turn that on, this tab in the party sheet that shows the inventory will be available for your players to interact with. So what they could do is, for instance, let's just say that Abacus, I wanted to sell one of those. So I can drag and drop that as a player, and that puts it in the kitty here to sell. Now, if somebody else on the table wanted that Abacus, they could take this item and drag it to their sheet, and it'd go right back on there. So this is how you would transact without the GM being there. And in the chat window, it keeps track of it. So there's a record of all the transactions. So that's a way that you can buy, sell, and trade. The DM doesn't necessarily have to be there unless they want to. If you have the store all set up, ready to go, they can buy the stuff they need. They can take stuff off their sheet and add it to this 
party sheet to be sold later or for one of their allies or friends to grab it and put it on their character sheet. So once all those transactions are done, then the GM can sell the items uh, when he gets back to the table or before the next adventure, however you want to do it. And then the GM can hit this refresh and that will rebuild the inventory so he'll know who has what and how much gold they have left, all those sort of things. And then for the sell of the item, you just click over, click the sell, and if it has at least one gold value or more, it will sell it. But in this case, it said sell total is less than one currency unit. So ball bearings at a thousand. So if you click this, this only has one gold. So it's hard to sell 50% of one gold. It won't do it. So what you'd have to do is either turn this to silver. So maybe this will turn into 10 silver instead. And then you'll be able to sell it and divide it evenly. So that's one pain in the butt about the, the, the way inventory is handled. So now when I go to sell it, it'll sell it, but I'm only going to get 50%. So I only got five um, silver pieces for that. Once you're all done with the transactions, you can hit the down arrow, or you can just rebuild the party's inventory and hit the down arrow, and then that will distribute the items to the players. So that's kind of how that works. And then this percentile is kind of like your markup or what type of sell price they can get for selling items. So like this case, if they want to sell items, the, the storekeeper is going to give them 50% of the value. So that's one way to, to handle um, stores and such. Now, there are other options that you can employ if you're going to use Fantasy Grounds. If you haven't ever used it, there is some things out there for um, Fantasy Grounds that are extensions. So here's one from from uh, Team 2E. This is Matacure's store. So what this does is it sets up a transaction, uh, a way basically for you to um, transact without having to um, basically intervene as much. So the GM puts all their shop inventory on the right-hand side, the stuff that's available for that specific shop. And then over here is where the items get dragged into there, the stuff they want to buy, and then the total is calculated down here on the on the left. And then over here on the right is your markup. So you can adjust the shop prices. You can double them, triple them, you know, that sort of thing. It's a multiplier, I think. And then these have the individual stores items. So this is just kind of a way to manage buying and selling and trading, but having an actual shop. So it not only has this stuff, but you also have role-playing stuff, which would have... A potential to put NPCs like maybe you had a tavern and you can have a different menu for um, or different items so just not just services and, and items it could be favors it could be deeds contracts so items could be anything uh, that you want them to be with value and then over here uh, Bane also has uh, an extension this is his shops emporium so he made his a little bit more universal but it's for 5e and Pathfinder 2 and he also has an Italian version. Basically, this is to allow um, another way to haggle. Uh, there's different um, scents where you, it kind of works similar to, to Matacure's, but it has a little bit different approach. So there's different things that you can use to manage and to deal with store. So this is, like I said, this is Bane's. There's Matacure's. And they have coin converters. And they have other things that are more advanced that, that are put out by other publishers. But these links will be in the end of the video if you're interested in them. They do cost a little bit, like this one's 700 coins. I think that's seven bucks or something like that. So that's just a uh, kind of a convenience thing. You don't have to have those. You can make your own stores. But those really help. So in this case, I have Matacure's um, stores thing open. And if you actually go into modules and you load the um, instructions, which comes with this, and you load the examples, you get example shops to see how they're set up. So in this case, this is spellcasting services. So this would be, if you share this this record with the, with the party, they can access the store. So what's neat is you can link this to a place on a map. So maybe there's a, uh, a shop that you have. So let me go into my images and let me go to... Let's see. I want to go into here's some magic shops. So 
maybe if there's a jeweler shop or let me let me see if there's a magic shop here somewhere tavern shop and blacksmith magic shop okay so this is just a example so this is a, a module that's put out on the fantasy ground store and if you wanted to make uh, this sort of thing available to your players you'd first share the record and then once you do that you link it to wherever the shopkeeper is on the map and then you right click on here and you make this uh, a shareable link so when your players are on the map and they go to a certain store they can click on the the vendor so in this case uh, it would be in here when they come in here they can click on that it brings up the shop here are all the services, or in this case, uh, these are these are like spells that you can have them cast. So you use the, the add to cart. So they need a heal, like someone needs cure wounds because they're wounded. Uh, another person wants an item identified, and then so on and so forth. You can also put the markup in here. So I don't know if we can do fractions. Yeah, you can. So 1.5 is instead of, uh, instead of one, because one is base. So at one, the markup is, so for that service, it's 10. But if you go 1.5, it's now 15. So that's your fractions that you can use to bring up the value and the price. Then it gives you the total down here and you can empty the cart. So if you wanted to start over, you can. And then there's a buy button. So once you click buy, you have a parcel now that can be awarded to your player, which in this case, I would drag it to the player, to their inventory, and it would place the items in their um, inventory, or in this case, it's just gonna take away the gold. So you drag and drop that on there, and now he's 45 in the hole. But, you know, I I have a l credit limit. If you go over 100 gold, you owe the store, you can no longer buy anything there. That's kind of my, my my rule of thumb my house rule but essentially you can't control the negative number without doing some kind of elaborate extension but that's a way that you can handle this sort of thing and that's just a magic shop you can get items you can set it up however you want but when you do that in game if you take the time to to do all this ahead of time and put in a little work into it it can really make things go quicker uh, my suggestion, if you're just getting into Fantasy Grounds, is just kind of play around with the vanilla part of it until you get used to it, and then start adding these extensions in. The the main base functionality is the stuff I was showing you before, where you just use the party sheet, you award their treasure parcels here, you decide how much gold they're going to get for their sales, and then you go ahead and put that in here. I don't know if this store actually... Uh, takes care of uh, the sell of items. You might still have to do that through the party sheet. The next thing is on this also has a tab. So this has a basically a menu that you could build for this particular shop. Another thing I like to do is I'll put the NPC record. I'll link that on there. So if for some reason they need to interact with the NPC, you can send them, make an encounter here, and send them right over here to the combat tracker. Let's say they got in a brawl with the shopkeeper. So you might make an encounter that has the shopkeeper, his bodyguard, or the muscle, and then maybe an assistant. And then you could send those straight away over into the, the combat tracker uh, to uh, deal with that situation if you needed to. So each shop, you could make your own shopkeeper, and then you could set up your menu here. This is more for the game master, I think, but it's still nice. So um, you would add double the value of any consumable material components, add 10% of the value for any non-consumable material. So these are just sort of uh, guidelines that the person who made this set up. But this one draws inspiration from previous playtest materials. Uh, so this is Matakires, but you, there are lots of other solutions out there. But I think the biggest part of this, if you want to make a custom store for yourself, is to make all the items. That's the work. So building all these items from scratch is a lot of work. Uh, and then turning those into parcels so that you can share them easier with your, with your group, that's a lot of work. If you don't want to put all that work in and you want a little bit quicker solution, a little bit cleaner, you can use one of the extensions. But I think um, if you build your own stores in a separate campaign, uh, put everything in it that you want, and then export it as a module, then you can load that up in any campaign 
that's related to that rule set. So that's that's the advice I give you for creating uh, stores and using those in Fantasy Ground. So you can link uh, either the shops or you can link an image that has the store items as individual links to different parcels. So there's just different ways that you can handle this, but essentially this is how most people would do it after you get familiar with the, with the rule set and with the uh, with Fantasy Ground's interface. So like I said, you can use something like this, like a menu, maybe this is a bar, and you would put link this to the bar and then make sure that the link is shareable. So when they go up to the bar, they want to order drinks and stuff, they can click on it. Maybe it has a picture of the bartender and then the menu items, and then you'd have all these links on the menu items themselves, and they click on it and it brings up the parcel. They drag the parcel to their character sheet. It's a done deal. They bought that food. So that's just a way to, to another way you can do this. So it just depends on what your needs are and how you want to present this and how much involvement that you want as a game master. Like I said, I usually do a stores day. So I'll leave my table up for an hour or two and I'll let the players know. And if they want to buy, sell and trade, they can get on the table and do it. That way it doesn't interfere with the campaign. Or if it's a plot element and it's in the middle of the game, that's the only time I'd probably run that is if it's actually part of a story. Other than that, I don't want to run a whole day of buying and selling and trading unless it's really important to the plot. Like maybe the storekeeper is part of the story. Maybe he's a, a quest giver or something like that. But all in all, I like the stores uh, day because, you know, it just makes more sense and it's a lot less invasive. And if you have something like a store for an urban store and then maybe a store for outside of the city and maybe an illegal kind of illicit store like underground stuff with those i like to give i like to put in some rare magic items poisons drugs and uh cursed items are, are good for those so you can make three or four different types of stores so that way you don't have to um, change much you know or or you can make individual shops for a town however you want to do it but it's just up to you um, what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, Silver, thanks. So these are just things you could do to make things um, easier on yourself and for your campaigns. Now, it is a lot of work up front. You kind of have to be dedicated if you want to build your own. But really, you just build the items. You can make copies of existing items so you get an idea of what they, how they're built. Once you do all that work, then you can start making parcels, which doesn't take quite as long, but it's still a tedious process. But once you're done with it, you don't have to mess with that too much more. And then you can actually export it as a module, and then you can load it and use it in different campaigns. If you build it in your main game campaign, you're kind of stuck with it there. If you want it to be more universal and you want to use it in other places, then build it in a separate campaign, export it as a module, and then load it when you need it. Or you can go and get one of these um, extensions, which will give you that ability to um, add shops. So like this is the shop extension. Uh, this will add another button here. And I loaded the module that has all of these examples of shops. So here's a player's handbook uh, weapon shop. So you probably have to have the player's handbook or at least the SRD loaded. But what it is, is with, with that basic example, it's locked. You can't edit that. But if you make a copy of it, so here's the weapon shop. If you right click in the, or you just kind of redrag the same link, now you have an editable copy. So here I can actually go in here and set this. So all the prices right now are negative one. So I'd have to go in and, or this is actually how many are on hand. So I would say maybe I got two battle axes, a blow gun, maybe three clubs, uh, a couple hand crossbows, maybe one heavy, two light, maybe five daggers. So you're, you're setting up your quantities for your store. And then once that's done, you can share this record. And then the players, when they come into the store, they can add whatever they want to their cart. 
and don't forget to put your markup in there if you want. So those are just kind of things you can do with, with those types of extensions. So that's just a really handy thing you can do to help make your games run a little bit smoother. But like I said, if you do your own custom work, it's a lot of work up front. But that all depends on what you're doing. If you're making a, a, a commercial product, you'd probably just be re relegated to what they provide you. But if you want to do a homebrew shop and you want all the details and artwork and all that stuff, it's going to take some time. But nonetheless, you can link the shops to the or, or your stores to different buildings in your map, or you can take a menu and share that with your group. If they go to a tavern, maybe there's only like a four or five items on there. So it really depends. And one other good use for this type of thing is um, Theodore had made a shop that was exclusive to Ravenloft. So this was like a, a Curse of Strahd stores. So this has a story template and in there are all these different uh, different items that are available for that shop. So if you right click on this and you share this with your party, you can actually just link these two story entries to a building and then your players can click on these which are parcels and drag those over to and here's the negative gold or the copper so they can drag those over to their sheet so you can do it as a menu too you don't have to have individual items necessarily pinned on a map so i kind of like this because this is the entire store so this would be more of a vanilla type approach where you don't have an extension and then of course you have these things here like matakiri has made where the store front is made for you or the one that bane made so this kind of depends on, you know, what your comfort level, your familiarity with Fantasy Grounds is, those sort of things. But now all, not all items and stores are the same across all rule sets. Some are a little different than others, but you can kind of do the same thing in a lot of the core rule sets. I know that Pathfinder and Fan, or D&D &D and I think uh, Starfinder and those are very similar. Maybe different in other uh, sorts of uh, genres or other um, non-core rule sets like Call of Cthulhu might be different but you can still probably do something very similar and keep in mind that some of these extensions are only for 5e or only for Pathfinder or whatever so you have to kind of pay attention to that but if you don't have that availability for your rule set you can always make your own kind of like I showed here where you just kind of have your own menu you link them and there you go so the instructions for the Curse of Strahd is that you share the story listed in the Curse of Strahd shops category in your story entries. All the links in each menu are shared by default, but if you want to make an item unavailable, you just right click on the corresponding pin and unshare it. It's useful if you need to imply scarcity and those sort of things. Um, if you need to know where a specific item is listed, you can search for it on the parcel list and shop where it is located or listed. So you can take like this is a, uh, um, Erisic Stockyard, so you would link this to the, the map in your campaign. So it just depends on how you want to do it. But hopefully that's helpful, and like I said, those two extensions that I mentioned, there are a few more on the Fanscrowns Forge. I will have those linked at the end of the video in the description. And uh, happy gaming, everyone. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see